Hi everyone. My name is uh, Ruben Mbuki and uh, today we're going to look at a topic that follows after insulin production and its effect on the body. So we are going to talk about the opposite of insulin in short, which is known as glucagon. Because as you know, when you talk about insulin, you probably look at what we call how you can be able to reduce the amount of glucose that is in blood plasma by converting it into something that is less active in the body like glycogen, okay? But now we're going to look at the opposite of insulin, which is known as glucagon. It's also one of the hormones produced by the alpha cells, which are part of the highlights of Langine cells. So as you know that insulin is produced by the beta cells, while wow, the alpha cells produce what we call glucagon. So now, what does this glucagon do? So this glucagon is responsible for <clears throat> converting excess or converting glycogen back into glucose so that it can be accessed by your cells, okay? So as you know that this hormone is more, I mean, its effects are more seen during periods of starvation because your body does not have enough energy, okay? So it's going to reach out to another part of the body so that it can be able to access the reserves of that sugar and then be available to the cells. So basically what you're talking about, you're talking just about regulation, all right, or homeostasis. Like I said in the previous video, this is just the maintenance of an of a constant internal body environment, okay? So under insulin, you looked at how insulin comes in to control the amount of sugars in your body by converting them into something that is less active or that is not active, all right? So insulin works when you're feeding, okay? When you've got so much glucose or so much carbohydrates available, while glucagon acts in periods of starvation or hunger or fasting to produce the energy or the sugars that are essential to make your body function effectively. So we're just trying to maintain a constant internal body environment. So now let's go to the next slide. All right, so now we need to understand what glucagon is, okay? So now, distinguish the effect of GLP and pancreatic and pancreatic glucagon. So now if you go back, you look at insulin production and its effect. We did learn about GLP, okay? Yeah, so GLP has to do with, uh, these are hormones that are produced by the GIT tract or the enteric, uh, enteric part of the body, all right? So now, distinguish the effect of the GLP and pancreatic glucagon. If you go back and look at the video concerning GLP and insulin and its effect, you'll be able to understand and grasp the concept of what you're talking about. But I'll be able to at least go back and be able to uh, discuss some information pertaining insulin production and its effect too, in connection with Glucagon. Now, let's read the first bullet. Now, pancreatic glucagon opposes the hepatic effect of insulin. So, pancreatic glucagon opposes the hepatic effect of insulin. Like I said, they're more like antagonistic. They're opposite of each other. If insulin is responsible for producing glycogen, glucagon will be doing the opposite, breaking down glycogen into glucose. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next few slides, right? So the antagonist, the opposite of each other, they counter, they would counter effects, short. So now, pancreatic glucagon opposes the hepatic effect of insulin, whereas GLPs act as incretins. So incretins, these are produced by the GIT or the enteric, okay, part of the body. So now, gut, whereas GLPs act as incretins, okay? Gut-deprived peptides that enhance glucose-stimulated insulin secretion. So that's what incretins are. Oh, these are hormones 
produced by an enteric or the GIT. Okay, these are gut deprived. I mean, these are gut uh, uh, derived. Sorry, these are gut derived peptides that enhance glucose simulated insulin secretion. So now the security half life of glucagon is three to six minutes. Okay, it's about three to six minutes. That's the half life of this glucagon in your body before it gets broken down or before it gets inactive. All right. Now, describe the mechanism by which glucagon increases glucose output from the liver. How does glycogen increase the output of glucose from the liver? All right. So as you know, this, stru uh, this structure known as glycogen is usually stored mostly by the liver and also by the muscles. So now during periods of starvation or fasting, we want to access the glycogen to form the sugar or the glucose that we need. So now the question that is being posed is describe the mechanisms by which glycogen increases the glucose output from the liver. So this, this is as follows. So now the major target organs for hormone for the hormone glucagon is so what does it target? It targets the liver. That's a major target organ. It also target other parts, but the major target is the liver because that's the one that contains a higher storage of glycogen. I don't want to break it down. So now in the liver, it acts as it, it acts via the GS2 activate adrenal cyclase and increases the intracellular cyclic AMP. After that, this leads to via protein uh, kinase A to activation of the uh, phosphorase and therefore to increase breakdown of glycogen and an increase in the plasma glucose level. So this is just basically describing the steps that are followed in order for us to be able to recover the glucose from the glycogen in the liver. Glucagon is a glycogenolytic, meaning it's able to break down glycogen to produce glucose, uh, gluconeogenic, lipolytic. Lipolytic has to do with breaking down of lipids. Okay, or fats to produce glucose or sugars that can be used by the body. And they are also, I mean, it's also ketogen, uh, uh, ketogen, uh, ketogenic, meaning if you have read the process of ketogenesis that you learned under biochemistry, you can just go back and read that so that you can be able to appreciate the information. It also acts on the G protein coupled receptors. These are the things that like, uh, 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 I mean, glucagon can be able to do in order for it to be able to produce or recover glucose at the end of the process because that's the major uh, product that we need. So this diagram is just trying to outline or show us the steps in which uh, glucagon can be able to produce glucose. So now, you need to take note, let's go on. So now, it's saying the solid lines indicate facilitation or stimulation, right? Take note. While the dashed lines indicate inhibition, meaning prevent example, stopping something. So what you are seeing here is glucagon, and you have what we call cyclic AMP. So now, once glucagon is produced by the alpha cells of the pancreas, okay, when it goes to the liver, it's going to affect or cause cyclic AMP be activated, right? Which is going to further cause the production or activation of what we call protein kinase A. So once you have cyclic AMP, which also affects protein kinase A, which is an enzyme, which is going to lead to the effects that you're going to talk about. So if you can see, we have good glycogen there, we have good glucose 6-phosphate, and there's uh, fructose 6-phosphate, and there's fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Then we have got what we call phosphonyl uh, pyruvate, and then we have got pyruvate at the end. So like I said, these dashed lines indicate inhibition of stopping something. While the solid lines means stimulation or activation. So I'm going to find that this protein kinase A has got these effects. 
in order to maximize the production of glucose from glycogen, okay? So now, after we have protein kinase A, this protein kinase A is going to have one stimulatory effect or facilitation effect, which is going to cause this glycogen which is stored in the liver is going to be broken down into glucose 6 phosphate. So this glucose 6 phosphate can either form glucose or it can go back to glucose 6 phosphate. If you can see, this is a very uh, reversible reaction that's being shown. Okay, so this protein kinase has got this first effect. Glycogen is going to be broken down into glucose 6 phosphate. That's the first step. But we also talked about inhibition. But how does this inhibiting effect contribute to the production of glucose? So we're going to see that in, in order for us not to have pyruvate at the end, because pyruvate has to do with uh, and uh, glycolysis and all those process that you are talking about. You know, let me not go into biochemistry. So now, when you look at this, so we produce glucose, or we can go back to glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, but again, this flowchart can go a bit further, all right? So now we're going to have an inhibitory effect of protein kinase A. So you can see there, it's going to go there and combine with fructose or react with fructose 6, 2 comma, uh, I mean, fructose 2 comma 6 by phosphate. So with the help of fructose 2 comma 6 by phosphate, it can combine or react or catalyze, short, it can catalyze the combination of these two, fructose 6 phosphate and fructose 2 comma 6 by phosphate to form what we call fructose 1 comma 6 by phosphate. So this protein kinase A is going to prevent or slow down or inhibit this from happening. So when you inhibit this from happening, meaning you are going to prevent phosphonyl pyruvate to be produced, which will produce what we call pyruvate. So this has got a mandatory function of slowing down or inhibiting this type of reaction. Then again, we are going to have another inhibitory type of reaction here between phos uh, phospho, phosphonyl pyruvate and pyruvate. So once this goes there, it's going to inhibit this mechanism, ends preventing or causing us to have excess glucose in the body or in the liver or in the plasma. So this is the inhibitory effect and also the stimulatory effect. So now, list any three hepatic effects of glucagon. How does glucose affect the liver? So when you talk here, the word hepatic, we're just basically talking about the liver. Don't get confused, okay? So now, list any three hepatic effects of glucagon. Okay, number one. Don't Hepatic effects of glucagon include the following. So the first one is increased hepatic glucose output via the release of glycogen stores, via the process called glycolysis and in concert with other counter-regulatory hormones stimulating stimulation of hepatic glucose synthesis, meaning making the production of glucose to be there. So there's the aspect of producing glucose and the raw materials which are there. Then there's also just the breaking down of glycogen to produce glucose. That's the first stage. Then the second stage is to do with increased hepatic uptake of amino acids, acids which fuel gluconeogenesis with an increased uptake of amino acids. Then the third one will be a stimulation of fatty acid oxidation and endogenesis, thus providing an alternative fuel for ketone bodies. That can be used by the brain when glucose is not available. The physiological significance of uh, glucagon receptor in non-hepatic tissue, the kidney, the adipose, the pancreas is less certain. For example, glucagon, while less potent, shares with the glycogen G, I mean, GLIP, the ability to enhance the glucose induced B cell insulin secretion. So these are just the three major ways in which uh, glucagon affects the or the liver cells. So now let's go to the muscles. So now, what's the effect of glucagon on muscle glycogen? Remember, I mentioned that glycogen can also be stored in the muscle, not only in the liver, but in the muscles. 
it has no effect. Glucagon does not cause glycogenolysis uh, in muscle. It increases uh, gluconeogenesis from available amino acids in the liver and elevates the metabolic effect. Yeah, the metabolic, uh, metabolic effect that is happening there. So what's the effect of glucagon on the heart? So, so large doses of exogenesis glucagon exert a positive inotropic effect. Okay, Increase contractility on the heart without producing increased my myocardial excitability and presumably because they increase myocardial cyclic AMP. So use of this hormone in the treatment of the heart disease has been advocated, but there is no evidence for a physiological role of glucagon in the regulation of cardiac function. So now what's the effect of glucagon on growth hormones, insulin and pancreatic somatostatin? So glucagon also stimulates the secretion of growth hormone, insulin and pancreatic somatostatin. So uh, in our next, uh, short lecture, I'm just going to talk about applied physiology, which has to do with the effects or the diseases that come about when someone is, has got either under secretion of insulin or glucagon. Thank you very much.